welcome to my garden. I'm Astrid and I'm growing in Central North Carolina, Zone 8. This week I'm going to be sowing peas to get a jump start on our spring vegetable garden. As you can see in the back garden over here, all I have are some leftovers from the winter garden. Um, I have some brassicas and some kale and char and lettuce, arugula and corn salad. All of those plants are overwintered from our autumn and winter garden when the light started decreasing around end of November and once we hit the winter solstice in the middle of December, um, these plants definitely stopped growing. You didn't see as much growth being put on and they're now kind of in survival mode. So that's all you see right here. And Actually, it's really interesting because even though we've gotten lows around 20 degrees at the lowest a couple times, um, the soil temperatures are still in the 40s. I have a thermometer in front and I've been tracking that because this is only our second year growing. And things like soil temperature, your lows, your highs, uh, wind, precipitation, all of those things are really important to be able to gauge how well your crops are going to do in different seasons. So with this mulch I've laid down, uh, it's leaf mulch and straw. It has really helped keep the soil warm even when we get those lower temperatures. I do have some sheet plastic over there from a low tunnel I attempted, but it really wasn't necessary, which was good for me actually because that's too much work and I'm lazy. So we have been growing all of these crops without cover all winter. Um, like I said, the temperatures have only gotten down to 20 a handful of times, um, and that's pretty normal for our area in Central North Carolina. So it's been really easy to keep growing um, things like salad crops, uh, cooking greens, and some brassicas over the autumn and winter months. Now I'm focusing on looking forward to the spring because those temperatures will come in this area they will start showing up around mid-February actually. So that's when a lot of the spring crops will get planted out into the garden, uh, like carrots, uh, more salad crops, um, things that are frost hardy, more brassicas, kale, mustard, things like that, that will tolerate some slight frost. But the peas are really the beginning of that spring sowing for our area. Peas actually stop growing and stop thriving when the temperatures hit 70 degrees. And for us here in zone 8, that happens really early, um, March or April. So I have to get the peas in the ground now so that they can put on a lot of growth and give us a crop before the temperatures really get warmer. So now that I'm looking forward to the spring garden and getting these beds filled with new vegetables, um, we're just going to see how these plants continue to do and if they don't start putting on growth when the temperatures warm up and they should be putting on growth, then I'll just pull them out and replace them with other seedlings and try again. So like I said, it's really important to track those temperatures of your soil, to track the precipitation and to track how low the temperatures get and then which vegetables thrive even in those lower temperatures, especially in the winter. And then for us in our area, conversely, since it gets so hot in the summer, it's going to be important to track the highs and then which uh, vegetables will drop that size. So let's go check out the front garden and then we'll sow those peas for the spring. Okay, here we are in the front garden. We have six beds. And you'll see that much of the same stuff in the back is planted up here, again, just overwintering for the season until they're going to start putting on growth. Um, as within the back beds, I have amended these with straw leaf mulch and a couple inches of compost. Um, that's going to replenish nutrients in the soil, and as the leaf mulch decomposes, it's actually going to build the soil structure as well. Both of those things are really good for plants, um, especially a lot of the spring vegetables that are very nitrogen heavy feeders. Um, so you also see that we have many trellises um, over here. You can see here and here. Uh, we have a bunch of trellises and that really helps us make the most of our smaller space. 
Um, I'm gardening on a third of an acre, and this is our front garden, so I want it to look tidy and keep things organized. And having more vertical gardening stops things like melons and squash um, from spreading all over the place. So that's always nice, and it also means that I can get more vegetables in a smaller space. We don't quite follow the square foot gardening concept, but I do focus on planting intensely, again, just to make the most of our uh, fewer raised beds that we have on our property. And with these trellises right here, we have about 50 linear feet of trellis, which will enable us to grow about 50 squash plants, 50 tomato plants, um, probably 100 bean plants. Um, if they're vining beans or some combination of those. Right now they're planting peas for the spring season and you can actually sow those seeds just about like four inches apart. So you can get a lot of plants in a small amount of space, which is one, just one of the reasons why vertical gardening is really awesome, especially if you have a smaller lot. Let's get those peas in the ground and then I will show you our backyard low tunnel and some seedlings that I've been growing over the winter to put in our flower beds for the spring. Okay, so this is my collection of seedlings that I sowed uh, this past autumn between October and November. And they, I've started all these plants from seed. And this is so that some of these plants will flower this year. So I'll explain my reasoning for each as we go through them. So you'll see this is uh, our calendula. It's struggling a little just because it's been so dark but it is still surviving and it's going to do just fine. This is thyme. Um, this is going to go in our herb garden. I have some liatris that I have started and some hollyhock. And hollyhock is a biennial, so if you start it in the fall, uh, it's, that's how you get the flowers the following spring. If you just sow the seeds out in the spring, you have to wait the next year to get flowers. And I'm pretty impatient, so I just, sowed some seeds this fall and saw, you know, waited to see what would happen and it actually worked really well. I have not done that much work with this low tunnel. It's kind of at the back of our property and you can see some of these plants are struggling because of that. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, if it can survive through the low tunnel through the winter, then it has a good chance of surviving when it's in the ground. So here's some dill that I planted. These were all planted, the dill was planted from seed in the autumn, and you can see how big it's gotten already. So that's going to be in a good spot for the spring. Here I have some parsley. The parsley is actually overwintered. I uh, took that out of the pot it was in and put it in here for some more protection, and it's doing really well. You can see some mint back there, and then this is catnip, uh, which is actually doing really well. And then I also have some strawberries right here that these were actually just garden strawberries that were runners they were runners from our neighbor next door and they've been doing really well these are going to go in a garden stock in the spring and then right here i have some sage these were sorted from seed and you can see how much they've grown over the winter well now that we've planted the piece and i've given you a tour of the flower seedlings that i'm putting in the ground in the spring that's about it for this week thanks so much for watching and please subscribe bye